you have your Bibles handy, we would turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Tonight's presentation from our Honduras trip is going to be broken up in several different sections. I appreciate the work that Josh Wilson has put in in put, going through, sifting through over 2,000 pictures in order to uh, make the presentation uh, down and something that you will enjoy and not be too long. It took a lot of time for him. I appreciate his work in that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. But after we had already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness in our, in our God to speak to you the gospel of God with much opposition. For our exhortation does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who examines our hearts. For we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with the pretext for greed. God is our witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, even though as apostles of Christ we might have asserted our authority. But we proved to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. Having thus a fond affection for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become very dear to us. Many years ago, this congregation began to work with the Valdosta, Georgia group with Latin American missions to take trips and go to Honduras. But something changed over the years, and that is that this congregation began to love the Christians that had been converted in an earlier campaign. And since the Valdosta group goes to various regions of the country and you, don't, and you don't know what region you're going to be in, we decided several years ago to just focus on the region of Intubica because not only had, as Paul states here in verse 8, shared the gospel with them, but also he had shared lives with them. He loved them. And so I think it's a wonderful ministry for us to not just take the gospel, but also to take ourselves and to go and to, to love these people enough to make sure that they mature, that they continue to grow, that their faith is strengthened, and that they are taught more things and more truths from God's word. There's one other scripture that I would like for us to look at, and that is Romans chapter 10. If you'll turn there, please. Romans chapter 10. Verse 14, Romans 10, verse 14. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Now let's think about this together. I wish that all of us tonight could be wearing the same color shirt. We wore our Honduras shirts. But really, this is not something that we who are wearing these colored shirts have done. This is something we have all done. It's an interest in the people in Honduras, a love for them, but more importantly, a deep affection for the lost and for our Lord. Those who went and those who sent. I can't tell you how many of you stuck a, some money in my pocket or gave me a little money to help with our trip, and I'm sure many of our team members feel the same way. Appreciate that. This is a work and something that we are all doing together. We're a family, the family of God. This is our way of spreading the gospel in this region. We've shared with them not only the gospel, but our lives as well. Those who went and those who sent is something that we've all done together. We're going to break up this section, uh, this lesson. Josh Wilson's going to present part. Cub's going to uh, 
present part, and Rick is going to wrap it up. And then after Rick's part, we'll have an invitation song, and immediately then we have a, just a six-minute little slideshow that we'll watch before we actually go back and partake of the Lord's Supper together. By the way, one final little thing that's really off topic, and that is that Nathan's here tonight. He hadn't been here, and, and he's leaving Wednesday to go back, so if you want to give Nathan a hug, you better grab him before he leaves here tonight. I was going to start off today's presentation with the uh, medical mission trip. We had the Charlene, Tara, and I had the luxury of having the, the medical mission trip this year fall back to back with our trip from Northside. And uh, there was only a week and a half from the beginning of that campaign until our campaign started. So there was a, a lull of three days in between that allowed us to stay in the country for three days and uh, help Rusty and things like that in between before our group arrived. And uh, by doing that, we were able to save on flights and just pay for one ticket. And we were able to uh, stay at the same exact hotel. That's where they stayed when we were there for that trip. Uh, same, same hotel that we went on with our trip. So we had the luxury of going to both that one and this one this year. And so I was gonna share a little bit from that trip. We had uh, 38 baptisms. First off, we had a, a group of 30 plus people. And uh, during that trip, we had um, two dentists. We had a dental hygienist. We had a physical therapist there. Um, we had a pharmacy, eye doctor, you name it, we had it pretty much on this trip. And uh, we, uh, we had 38 baptisms during that week, um, five restorations, and 290 individual Bible studies. And so it was a very fruitful trip, and uh, I really enjoyed the, the work that they did, and I love this group. I've been with several of them. In fact, the eye doctor I was with, was there on my very first ever mission trip, and it was with these guys. Tara got to translate for Stan um, in the dental office, and uh, she also got to help him with the suction, so she was excited about that. She actually got to help him work as well as translate. And uh, she also participated in the, uh, the plays for the kids as they were learning in the kids' classes. She was one of Pharaoh's soldiers chasing the Israelites out of Egypt. Um, and then we had Charlene, she helped out with the, uh, the line, keeping people in order, making sure nobody was cutting in front of anybody else, making sure they had what they needed while they were waiting, and uh, socializing with all of them while they were there. So I know she made a lot of friends in line out there. <coughs> and then I got to, like I said, I was working with the eye doctor. Uh, his name's Randy Teller. And uh, we gave out, I think, 400 and something sets of glasses while we were there uh, on this trip. And uh, I got to help do a Devo for that trip as well. Our team, this was the largest team I've ever been on with Northside. Um, it was 28 people strong. And we talked about this while we were on the trip. We thought it was pretty interesting and, and, and neat. And it, it reflects the, the mentality and the heart of the people here at this congregation. This was the first year which we didn't budget for the trip. So all the funds came out of our individual pockets this year with the help of the Golden Years class and several individuals that helped out as well. But for the most part, it was coming out of the individual's budget, and yet we had the largest group when this happened. So we thought that was pretty neat and an indication of the, the, uh, the overall heart of the, of the congregation here. We thought that was pretty impressive. Um, this is our group. We had 28 of us, um, I think was the official count, 28. and. Uh, we all stayed at the Hotel Molino Real while we were out there, and uh, this was a great group. We had a, a strong showing of teens on this trip, and uh, they were hardworking. They were, they were just great, all, all of these people. I loved every single one of us that went on this trip. <coughs> Our team leaders, they don't often get recognized as much as they probably would like, or, or maybe they don't like to get recognized, but, but uh, they do a lot for these trips, and I know I would never want to do that. I would stress out completely um, because they got to plan the flights, the hotel stays, the meals, um, the signed rooms, transportation, head counts, passport checks, uh, provide water. I mean, they do, there's so much they do, you wonder when they get to enjoy the trip too. And uh, 
So I just wanted to say that, I, you know, Bo and, and uh, Rick and meeting in their rooms at night to discuss what's going on the next day and who's doing the Devo. And I know that they had a lot of work while they were there, and, and we appreciate it, you guys. <clears throat> we had a lot of first-timers on this trip, too. We had, I counted nine. Um, I've got six slides here. This was Samuel. He went, and uh, we were joking around with him because this was his first trip out of the country, first time on a plane. And uh, we joked around with him because he had fruit in his suitcase. He didn't realize that wasn't allowed to bring fresh fruit. So we were joking around calling him an international fruit smuggler. And uh, so when I saw this photo in the list of photos that I had at the house, I had to put that one in there showing him standing next to a security guard. at a, That's actually at the gas station in Siwatapeki. But uh, I thought it was appropriate. And then we had uh, uh, Kyra and Chris. These, these two ladies, they were, they were smiles all the time. And I didn't get to see Chris much. I got to see her on uh, some uh, um, Bible studies and door knocking that we did with her and Susan and some others. And uh, it was her and Susan that asked me while we were out there, well, what about this guy standing over here on the street just waiting? Let's go talk to him. Because we were trying to get to a house and we couldn't find anybody at home. And uh, that ended up turning into a really good conversation with Manuel. And uh, that guy showed up every night that we were there. So it was really good. So. Had she not been there, we might have just kept walking and never even thought about it. So we appreciate Chris and, and Susan on that one. You girls are great. You ladies are great. Susan was elbow deep. She got elbow deep in the work, too. You'll see some photos later of her painting and all that with, with the rest of us. And, and uh, she was getting real close to the people. And, and uh, um, um, what's her name? Lady that runs the restaurant. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on her name. Yolanda, yeah, Yolanda took a liking to her. She wanted to take pictures with Susan. It was, it was great. Um, then Mike, I got to go with him on, uh, we got to go around and uh, evangelize with him, and, and uh, I believe it was Ed, no, it was Carlos. And uh, I got to see this guy. He's a big, tough exterior, and then you see him in country with all these kids, and you can tell he's a big softy. So uh, he also, I think he was touched. He even mentioned at one point that he can't wait to come back and do this again. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of him in the future. And then Kim, this was her first time, her first flight, too. I was picking on her on the plane. She was picking on me back about the, the flight. But uh, she was great. Every time you see her, I went through all, everybody's photos, and almost every single person that sent me photos had a picture of Kim squeezing some kid somewhere. She was squeezing somebody or, or hanging out with the kids. It was cute. And then uh, Jeller and uh, Claudia, they were uh, helping us out from uh, Green Forest uh, with Jesus. And they turned out to be pretty invaluable. These two, they were both translators. And if you spend more than five minutes with either one of them, they're going to be laughing or joking about something. So these two were a great group to have with us on our trip. <coughs> uh, we had a lot of teens, like I said. These are our teens from the trip. We had uh, every one of the young men that was on the trip did a Devo. And they were all very good Devos. And uh, so I was real impressed with them. They were getting in there, giving Devos. I know they had to study for those. Some of them forgot they were doing it, and they had to last-minute crunch before they spoke. But they all did great. They were all good devos. And, and uh, the young ladies, they were in there uh, shoveling the concrete with the rest of us. I mean, they were all a hard-working bunch. Here's some of the, the pictures of them doing their devos, Zachary and Dakota, Nathan and Daniel, Samuel and Michael. And Zachary even got to baptize someone while he was there. I thought that was pretty impressive. I have yet to do that. I'm excited. I got to do that sometime. I'm a little envious on that one. Local preachers. We have the easy part when we go down there. I say easy part. Um, but when we go down there, we spend one week. And in all the chaos and all that we do, it's just a week's worth of work. Once we leave, these local preachers are the ones that have to go back and follow up on the studies. They've got to keep in touch with the families they've got to try and you know keep people keep people close and they've got a lot of work plus I know that Rusty works with Rick to help plan for these trips too and so we need to we need to keep these guys in our prayers too because they're the ones that are doing the long haul the rest of the year that we're not there and uh, we've got um, left to right there on the, on the image we've got Margarito and then Carlos senior and then uh, Manuel and then Joel and then Naum there on the right. 
and we have uh, Edgar and his family on the left, and Rusty. And there's Kelvin. He's on the right, in the center of the photo on the right. But they're the ones that are there doing the baptisms and so forth afterwards. Any fruit that we've, we've helped cultivate there, they're the ones that have to, to, to get back with them and, and bring them in and, and uh, baptize them when they're ready. Uh, our translators, sometimes as a translator, it feels like your job is never done because as long as someone needs to say something, you're not done talking. You got to translate and speak for everybody. You'll, you, you may think that uh, it's, it's time to go, but you got to help coordinate with the vehicles and people that are talking and saying, which one do I go in? And, and uh, so we, we, we always need translators on this trip. And for these, these young teens that are coming now and for anybody that's up and coming, if you want to find a way you can help serve in the Lord's work, this is one great way to do it. If you can pick up the Spanish language, you will be a tool that we can always use on these trips. And uh, it, it's extremely helpful to be able to communicate what you're, you're wanting to say to people. I made the mistake on my trip, though. Physical therapist's translator left, and she asked me if I could come help her for a minute. Well, I hadn't studied the body parts that I don't normally use, like shoulder and knees and things like that. And uh, she asked me to tell this lady to rotate her shoulders. And so I told her, I said, ma'am, can you please rotate your ovens? And I said it in Spanish by accident. Both those words start with an H-O, but I said the wrong one because I wasn't prepared for it. She just looked at me kind of funny, and she didn't do it. And so then I, I told her again, I said, ma'am, you need to rotate your ovens like she's doing here. And uh, so she finally did it. And then the whole rest of the, the session, she never corrected me. But when I got done, I, I couldn't figure out why she was looking at me so funny. So I started looking up the word I used and found out I used ovens. And so they gave me an award on that trip for the Rotate Your Ovens Award for translating. <laughs> it was kind of funny. But this is uh, Jeller and Jesus on the left translating. They were two of our translators. And then uh, Claudia on the right. And then Rusty, he was helping out in the build project with Herman. And then Tara and I. All right, the next section's for Cub. I, I've been uh, to Honduras numerous times on these trips, and, and uh, I can't think of a trip that went any smoother or I went uh, that was as, as efficient and everything just worked well. I was... Uh, you know, which is a testimony to how, how good the, the leadership was. Again, that, that Rick and Bo did an excellent job with that. Uh, but also, like, like what was mentioned, uh, I was so impressed with how our teenagers, our young people, how hard they worked and how good they represented uh, their north side, uh, uh, their families. Uh, they, they just did a really, really good job. They didn't complain. They worked hard, and I was really impressed with that. I get to talk about the... Uh, the work projects. This is we did a baptistry. Uh, worked on the baptistry at Yamaragia. Actually, it was a did a a pour, a concrete pour. Uh, a lot of hard work. Basically, Connie Quanabong, she kind of ran that program right there. Uh, I'm I'm there and, and maybe got credit for it, but no, everybody knows Connie did all the the hard part, the brain part, and she finished most all of this. Uh, I can't see that. So framing it up and all that, we had some teenagers, some young people that worked hard doing this as well. Uh, even Rick, he worked a little bit on this. Is Rick working? Uh, mixing the concrete. I don't know if you've ever heard us talk about mixing concrete down there. That is quite a chore. You, you do it on the ground. Uh, you could see a picture there uh, of, of you just mix it. Just and there's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it. Uh, and, and I again, I was impressed. I was impressed with my two daughters, how hard they worked doing that. Uh, harder than a lot of boys and men, and, and uh, I didn't even know they could do yard work, let alone that right there. And I, just, I was down there shocked seeing them mixing concrete and, and literally worked harder doing that than I did. So I, I was impressed with that. Um, but lots of hard work. We had to go gather rocks up to p fill into the, the pad, uh, to pour that pad like that. and. Uh, Lots of work there. A lot of the teenagers helped with that, too. And that's kind of our finished product there. That's, uh, that's after it was finished. And, and there you can see uh, it underneath that awning there, and that's next to the, the right at the building at Yamaringia, the church building. 
the other group, there's another work group that, that built a, a building in, in Santa Cruz. Uh, let's see, I think Bo and Harold and Sandra and Josh and Michael Brown, Dakota, and I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody was on that group. Uh, but they, they literally put this, this building up, uh, and that's it was a great improvement to what the, the church there had in Santa Cruz. I think they met in a house, didn't they? Uh, so there's Dakota on top, Michael Brown. There, uh, Tara, she was, is that Tara? No, that's Bo. I'm sorry, Bo. I can't. Yeah, that's Bo. <laughs> he worked hard, too, sort of, I've heard. <laughs> Tara was there at times. Didn't she work there a little bit, too? Thank you. Tara was there. Got to get glasses. <laughs> Uh, and there, they're mixing concrete because they poured the pad there, uh, built the, put the roof on, built the frame and all that, put that. And then Sandra engraved the scripture, Psalm 103, 1, in the concrete. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And I can't pronounce the, the Spanish part of that. Um, and then you put a tarp around it for the siding. And that's that right there is an extremely nice building to worship in. Now, can you imagine that? Uh, our sheds are better than, you know, we wouldn't build a shed like that here. So that's what they worship in. They were very, very thankful to have that to worship in. And that's uh, on Sunday uh, Sunday worship there in, the, in that building after, after it was built that week. So that was really cool. Paint Project at El Cerrone, that building. Uh, actually, in 1996, the first trip that I ever went on down there, uh, Clyde Johnson oversaw the building of this church building uh, in, in El Cerrone. And uh, uh, Steve, his family, um, and, uh, and several others, I think the uh, Williams, uh, Kyra, and Chris were there. Ben Horn and his son was in on that group. Uh, Charlene, you were there on that painting? It's about, there's a big group, but they painted that whole building. You can look at it, that's the before picture. And uh, that's the pro that's part of the project there. There's Bo again there in the green shirt. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Sorry, that's Tara. <laughs> Sorry, dude, really, I, I, I couldn't see it. I can't see it. <laughs> and they painted on the inside. And there's the finished product. And that's... Uh, that's, those are really neat colors down there. That color scheme you see on a lot of the nice new houses and things. So that's, that's it. Oh, and I'm finished. I'm going to read a verse before I'm, I'm finished and then turn it over to Rick. Uh, well, it, it, as Christians, as Christians, we have a responsibility uh, to, to share the gospel. And, and that's the, you know, we go down there and we do a lot of work and we do a lot of encouragement and hugging kids and babies and trying to make people smile. But... The, the reason we go down there is to, to, is to, to spread the gospel, and that's all of our responsibilities. And I want to read in, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, at the youth, uh, youth rally at Mountain Home this past weekend, this, this was the chapter that, that was kind of the theme for the weekend. Uh, but this is a passage that I used in my lesson over there quite a bit. And, and, and uh, just beginning in verse 16. 16. Uh, from now on, therefore, we urge no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we, re we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So that's what we are as Christians. We are ministers of reconciliation, and it is our responsibility uh, to share the gospel with everyone that we, we can, to make known Christ. Next passage, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For, for our sake he made him to be sin. Uh, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Rick. The first night uh, in the devotional that I gave, 
I told the group one of the real challenges uh, in leading a, an effort like this is keeping the focus off of the urgent and on the important. And what we go down there for is to spread the gospel. <clears throat> and the work projects that, that Cub um, just presented to you really are ways that we try to make uh, the gospel more accommodative to people uh, and particularly for the congregations down there. But it is kind of a challenge because of all the logistics. And Rusty does a great job of having the material on the ground waiting for us when we get there, but uh, it's easy to get sidetracked and, and sometimes take your eye off of what we're really there for. And so that's kind of our challenge and, and our responsibilities as, as group leaders is to make sure we, we keep our uh, focus on what's really important. And here's just some pictures of some of our group who are going out uh, and door knocking. And these are all kind of scenes you've probably seen before if you've seen these. They're on the, the right. A lot of studies will take place on people's front porch, if not in their home. Uh, Bennett Horn there, and I'm not sure who the, that bottom picture is, that's Charlene. Looks like tending to some kids. And, and um, you know, we typically have um, groups of four to five that go out, typically a local person who can get us where we're supposed to be, in front of the people we need to be in front of, a translator, and then two or three of us. And it really is a team effort because invariably, at almost any house you go to, there are children there. And so it usually takes a couple of people to, to corral the kids so the adults can really focus on the Bible study. And there's some more of our group who are in the process of uh, door knocking. And then we uh, had uh, meetings each night where we had various ones of us preach. And there you see Steve and Bennett on the nights that they took. There's Bo and Josh. And there is Rusty and me. And then that bottom right, Cub actually preached at Samani, where it's a small congregation there, um, about 25 minutes out of Yamarangila. And really, it's, uh, it's one family made up, is it all women? I think the congregation is entirely, probably about 10 or 11 women. And so uh, we split our group up on that Sunday afternoon and half of us went to Samani to worship with that congregation and half of us went to Santa Cruz to worship with that congregation after we'd worshiped with Yamarangila in the morning. And then also we had a ladies class that Sandra Johnson led on one of the afternoons there. And then of course we always have the children's classes uh, that uh, our ladies and our young people tend to take really good care of and, and put a lot of effort and work into before we get down there to prepare the material and uh, have everything ready to go. And there's just some scenes from those children's classes. Some of our teenagers will be helping that. And as Steve mentioned, just a minute, we'll have about a six minute slideshow to kind of give you a, a, a broader taste or feel for the for the campaign this year but I'd like to just share for just a minute with you a thought that Paul writes about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 beginning in verse um, it's kind of dark up here beginning in verse 9 he says, for I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. And I think it's interesting that, that Paul makes the comment there that the gospel was not without effect in his life and that's one of the things that we stress is that the the grace of God is what we were trying to share with those people that we 
were able to get in front of and, and study with. And for five people that week, they were able to taste the grace of God. And I think our challenge as a congregation, as Steve pointed out, is not just to get people into Christ, but our challenge as a congregation is to see that the gospel is not without effect in the lives of those people who are Christians in Honduras, in the Intibaca, in the area that we uh, have kind of adopted. And the same would be true for every one of us sitting here tonight. I would dare to say that all of us have been exposed to some, in some way, form, or fashion to the grace of God. Some of us have, many of us here, have uh, been immersed into Christ and had his grace freely bestowed upon us. We've heard the word of God. We've, we've put our faith in Christ. We've confessed Christ. We've repented of our sins, and we've been immersed with Christ. And because of that, we have access to God's grace. But the question we always have to ask ourselves is, is that grace going to have the ultimate effect in, in my life? And that is, will I spend eternity in heaven? And tonight, if you have never done those things, if you're outside of Christ, if the grace of God is without effect in your life, you can change that and make it right. By coming tonight to confess Christ and put him on in baptism. Or if you're in Christ tonight and you look at your life and you question whether God's grace is still in effect in your life. You may need to make a change. And the best way to do that is to come before a body of God's people. Confess your needs and let us pray together with you. And So if you have a need tonight. Would you please come as we stand and sing? Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward is our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Till to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea. Echo back ye ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves. Jesus saves, shout salvation full and free, highest hills and deepest caves, this our song of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Please be seated. Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and unto the Lamb be praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor. Be to our God forever and 
stand for this last song together and if you've not had an opportunity to share in the lord's supper it's been left prepared while we sing this next song if you'll exit towards the classroom areas uh, we'll be happy to have some men there to assist you lord the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory Send forth your word, Lord. 
your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy and sin. on your kingly brightness so our faces display your brightness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell your story shine on me shine on me shine shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Please pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day you've given us and for allowing us to meet here today and to just hear about the mission trip to Honduras and all the good deeds that you've helped us do. And we just ask as we go throughout the work week and as we meet back here at your appointed time. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.